Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage for another Flames of War Battle Report. Due to our new family edition and COVID-19, we're being extremely careful. Eventually, I would like to have some people over for more varied forces as we have a good local community, but with a newborn, that's a call I'm not willing to make right now. My son and I will once again be rolling up in a battle between the Germans and the Americans from the D-Day sourcebook. We decided to use the most recent starter boxes for the Germans and the Americans. For the Germans, we were easily able to get a 100-point list, but the Americans, however, clocked in around 75 points, so we had to add some extras. The Germans will bring a Panzer IV tank company led by two Panzer IV HQs. The formation will have three additional Panzer IVs and two Tiger tanks. In formation support, there will be three Fallschirmjäger Stugs, an armored Panzer Grenadier platoon with seven MG teams and four SD KFZ 251s. They will add a Panzer Shrek. There will be three Nebelwerfers for artillery support and two 88s. This is a fantastic starter box that gives you a 100 point list. The Americans will bring a veteran M4 Sherman tank company led by two Sherman 75 HQs. They will have three veteran Sherman 76s and three veteran M5 Stuart light tanks in the formation. In formation support, they will have four M10 tank destroyers, three M7 priests for artillery support, a veteran armored rifle platoon at full strength with six rifles, five bazookas, two LMGs, and a mortar team. They have five M3 half-tracks, and that rounds out the box for the American starter force. In addition to that, we also added four three-inch tank destroyers, and in the air, we're going to have a Grasshopper Observation Post and two P-47 Thunderbolts. The Americans will be able to squeeze in the lucky car today, and their force will be 99 points. Today we rolled up free-for-all, and both players will have meeting engagement. The Germans will be attacking today, and both players will place two objectives within 8 inches of their opponent's table edge and from the side edge. A player wins the game if they end their turn holding one of the objectives on the opponent's side of the table. Both sides have been deployed, and we are ready to begin. And we are ready for action. The Germans are up for turn one with nothing in the starting step. We are moving into the movement step. And the Fallschirmjäger Stugs are going to move up at tactical speed using the hedge to the left as line of sight blocking terrain. The half tracks are going to move up behind them carrying the German Grenadiers. The Panzer IV platoon is also going to move at tactical speed, moving around the tree and through these crop rows. We're going to see a blitz move from the Panzer IV HQ unit. They are getting behind the hedgerows here. The 88s are going to move up at tactical speed, only able to move two inches here. And the fearsome Tiger tanks are also going to move at tactical speed. With movement concluded, we are going to move to the shooting step. And opening up for the Germans will be the Stugs. They're going to fire into the American infantry with their main cannons. Three shots going out, needing sixes on the orange and sevens on the blue. All of these are going to miss. The seven was long range. They are concealed and gone to ground. Then we're going to see the Panzer IV, one getting a shot on the three-inch tank destroyer platoon, and it is going to miss. And then the Tiger, we're going to have a gun uh, come around on that one. Also, a uh, long range shot, needs high dice here. Both of these are going to miss. And that is going to be the end of the opening turn for the Germans. Over for the Americans in the starting step, we're going to roll for aircraft. The Grasshopper is coming in. The P-47s also are coming in. 
and the Grasshopper moving towards those Nebelwerfers, and the P-47s are closing in on the German half-tracks. The M-10 tank destroyers are going to move at tactical speed using the building here for line of sight blocking on the right. They're going to bring two tanks around to the left, two tanks around to the right. The Sherman 75 HQ unit is going to come up behind the hedgerow here. It is line of sight blocking. And then the 76s, they're kind of caught in a predicament here. They've got Tigers coming around to the left of these woods. They're going to go ahead and move at tactical speed up, try to get some shots down on the 88s. In the American shooting step, the P-47s line up the German half-tracks. Any aircraft fire is coming out, needs fives to hit. All of these are going to miss from the four half-tracks. Bombs are being dropped. Artillery is being lined up, so the skill check going out now needing a four. The first will miss. The second is going to range in. It will be a plus one modifier here, so needing fives rolling from right to left. The first two miss, the third misses, and the fourth misses. So nothing happening on that one. The priest are then going to use the grasshopper to get an observation on the Nebelwerfers. Again, calling in artillery. The skill check will be a three. Again, avoiding terrain here. So just a straight three. They were going to range in on the first attempt, getting time on target. And they will need fours to hit here. They miss the first. They miss the second. And then the one on the left is going to score a hit. And that will be re-rollable if the save is made. The save has failed. So a firepower test goes out on a three up. It is destroyed. So one Nebelwerfer unit going down. The American M10s will get two shots using their moving rate of fire. This is going to be long range and concealed at the Panzer IV unit, needing sixes to hit. And they're both going to be good. Only one is in line of sight. So we assign that. The armor goes to a seven. That four will not equal the anti-tank of 12. So a firepower dice is rolled out. That tank is destroyed. The three-inch tank destroyers take aim at the Tiger tanks. Two of these are long range. The one in short range will be the, with the orange dice. So normally hit on fours, long range fives, and concealed six. Uh, the one at long range connects on that six in blue. We assign that up, and it's really anything but because the armor on this thing is so strong. That Tiger tank is easily good. He bounces the shot. The 76s take aim at the 88s, needing 4s and 5s here due to long-range stabilizers, but they do have the no HE special rule. So uh, four of these shots are short-range. We are going to see three hits that are going to go through. We assign those out, and four up gun saves are being taken. The first has failed, so it's going to go to a firepower check, and that will fail as well. So nothing happening here. The other two are going to take four up gun saves, and both are going to be good. And this brings turn one to a close. The 76s barreling down the right side. They're going to have their hands full with the 88s and the Tiger tanks here. The Panzer IV unit taking some damage and losing a team there. And the Priest getting rid of uh, one of the Nebelwerfers at long range with some artillery. The M10s doing some work. The Americans hunkered down on the objective here as the German forces continue to push forward on the flanks. Exciting turn one and turn two is coming up. In the German starting step, the Nebelwerfers will attempt to unpin and will easily do so on a six. The Stugs are then going to move up at tactical speed, angling themselves to get either shots on the M10s or the American Rifle Platoon. In thematic fashion, the German half-tracks will move up at tactical speed behind the Stugs, the Stugs covering their advance. The Panzer IV HQ team will move at tactical speed to the other side of the hedge, getting a line of sight to the armored rifle platoon. The Panzer IVs are going to take a skill check here to attempt a blitz move that will pass, so they're going to get a free 4-inch move, one moving to get line of sight on the M10s, the other one moving up as well. And then the Tiger tanks are also going to attempt a blitz. Skill check is going to be failed. So they are going to move at tactical speed to line up shots at the American 76s moving up the flank. In the German shooting step, the Nebelwerfers are going to attempt to range in on the armored rifle platoon with a salvo template. They will get ranged in on the second attempt. 
and that is what this looks like. We actually do not have the salvo template, so just mapping that out. It is six inches away from the approaching Stugs. And then we're gonna roll all of the bazooka teams looking for fives due to ranging in on the second attempt. One hit will be assigned. All of the rifle teams will roll out and one hit will be assigned there, again, needing fives. We are then gonna roll out for the two MG teams as well as the mortar team. They are both good. So hits are assigned. We also roll for the half tracks in the back that were also hit and the one on the back left was indeed hit. So rolling up now against top armor, that three is gonna be better than the any tank of two, which is good. And then saves being taken, that three will pass, just a normal infantry save. This one has failed, so a three up firepower is needed and will be passed. So one of the rifle stands getting removed. The Stugs eye up the American M10s with their moving rate of fire. Main cannons firing out with three shots. They only need fours here. It is short range. There will be one hit that goes through. An armor save will be taken here and failed on this four. So a firepower test coming out, and that will be failed with a one. So the uh, M10 will be bailed out. The Panzer IV HQ is going to launch two shots into the American armored uh, rifle platoon. The two misses here with the moving rate of fire. And then the Panzer IV unit is going to take a shot at the M10s as well, the one that he can see, needing sixes for long range and concealment. That shot is going to miss. The uh, other Panzer IV can't actually get line of sight to them, so he's going to fire at the three inch tank destroyer platoon, and he's going to miss as well. And using the Stormtrooper special rule, a skill check will be taken to shoot and scoot, it will fail. Next up, the Tiger Tanks are going to bring their guns to bear against the American 76s. Two shots going out, and a shot on that five will connect. It's going to go straight to a firepower test. We do roll a save here, which failed. We should not have rolled that, uh, but the firepower is good. That is going to be 176 going up in flames. The 88s are then going to take aim at them as well, getting their halted rate of fire. Four shots going out needing fours for short range. Two hits are gonna connect, and after getting those assigned, we are gonna go straight to firepower. The first one is good, and the second one is bailed out. So two 76s are destroyed, the third is bailed out. And that's gonna bring the Germans uh, turn to a close. We are now moving over to the Americans for turn two. In the starting step, we will roll to see if the 76 remounts, and they do. They will take a last stand check with only one tank remaining and will pass. Over to the M10s, we're going to see if he will remount. He does not. And then we're going to see if the armored rifle platoon will unpin. They do not. We then roll for aircraft. The grasshopper is going to make it onto the board. And then we will roll up a die for the P47s. They will not. We'll see a blitz move from the American HQ. The 75s are going to shift over, getting line of sight to the Panzer IV units. And then the Stewarts are going to make a terrain dash, going maximum speed here. These light tanks don't pack a lot of firepower, but they are very quick. They are going to apply pressure right down the middle on the Germans. In the shooting step, the priest already ranged in on the Nibelwerfers are going to repeat bombardment and trying for a hit on the top, they are going to miss. Trying for a hit on the bottom, they also miss. The mortar team tries to range in for the first time and they fail on all three attempts. We are then going to look at two bazooka teams. They're going to fire into the Stugs but with their moving rate of fire because they're pinned. They need fives here and they are going to get one hit. The three rolled here, they have a seven a front armor of seven, so that equals the anti-tank of 10. A firepower will be taken and will be failed. It needed a five here to bail them out. One of the M10s on the left brings its main cannon to fire against the Stugs. Uh, we'll need fours to hit here. Short range, no concealment. One of the hits will go through. Now these things, again, have a front armor of seven. Anti-tank of 12, that six is gonna beat it, so nothing happening. The other two M10s are gonna line up shots at the Panzer IV unit, so there will be four shots going out here. This is long range and concealed, so needing six, a hit will go through. Front armor of seven on these due to long range, and it's gonna fail, that's only a 10. Anti-tank of 12, the firepower test is good, so a Panzer IV goes up in smoke. The HQ-75s will line up shots at the Panzer IV unit as well, long range and cover for one of these, so fives and sixes respectively. Neither of those are going through. And then the three inch tank destroyers, three of these can draw line of sight, needing sixes, long range and concealed. None of these are going through as well. 
And over on the right flank, the American 76 is going to line up a shot at the 88s. Two shots with this halted rate of fire. Uh, one, of his, one of these dice is cocked here. We re-roll this out. Fails to hit, needing fours with short range. He's going to shoot and scoot, which is successful. And he is going to back back to where he is out of line of sight of these guns, forcing them to move. So turn two in the books, the 76s pushing up the right flank in a real tight spot between the Tigers and the 88s, both with the same gun, and it can do a lot of damage. The Americans have done a really good job with the Panzer IVs in the middle, and that has allowed the Stuarts to move straight up the board and apply pressure onto the Allied objective. That's going to force the Germans to make a decision here with their HQ tanks. On the left flank, the uh, Germans have pushed up the board, and we are going to see an infantry battle soon as they go to contest the objective. Turn 3, coming up. German starting step, the Panzer IV passes the last stand, so he will stick around. The Panzer IV HQ, they're going to move at tactical speed, bringing guns around to face the Stuart light tanks. The Tiger Platoon is going to move around the flank to bring the 76s into view. And that Panzer IV is going to make a tactical move, also bringing his cannon into view of the Stuart tanks. The Stugs are going to move up, keeping two inches away from the American Armored Rifle Platoon. And the German Panzer Grenadiers are going to disembark from the half tracks, moving towards the American Rifle Platoon as well. Some of the half tracks will reposition, and we are getting ready to move into the shooting step. The Fallschirmjäger Stugs will start things off, getting six shots, moving ready to fire with their machine guns. Needing sixes due to concealed and gone to ground, they will get one hit. Rerolling a cock die there. The save will be taken, and it will be passed. And then the Grenadiers are going to open up with their machine guns, getting a ton of shots, still at their moving rate of fire, again needing sixes. They're going to get nothing here. Unreal. And then one of the German half-tracks does have line of sight. He is going to open up as well, and he is going to get nothing with his machine guns. Moving to the other flank, the Tigers are going to take a single shot each at the 76. Uh, needing four, I'm sorry, fives to connect here due to cover. And one hit will go through straight to firepower. It will be bailed out. Next up, the Panzer IV, who came around the farmhouse. He is going to aim down the Stuarts, needing a pure four to hit here. He is going to miss. And then the Panzer IV HQ platoon coming around from the other side of the hedgerow. They will need a four on one and a five on the other. They're going to connect with a hit here. And that is going to go immediately to a firepower test. And a Stuart is going to go up in smoke. And moving to the assault step, where I get personally bogged down on the rules, so feel free to give me corrections in the comments. The Panzer Grenadiers are going to launch an assault into the American Rifle Platoon, along with the Stugs. So, uh, defensive fire being conducted first by the Bazookas. They're aiming at the Stugs, needing fives. They're going to connect with three hits. This one actually fails, and a firepower dice is rolled out and is not successful, but I think that tank should have been bailed out. The next one, the armor save is good, and the other one, we roll up an armor save, and it is going to be good as well. Two sixes there. Next up, the rifles and the MGs in blue are going to shoot, and the uh, they're not they're going to get four hits here, which is not enough to pin them. We are going to take saves, just getting their regular infantry saves, and all of these are going to turn out to be good. So they were one hit away from being able to pin this unit. The assault is going to go ahead as planned. Now, first up, these two Stugs are going to swing at the infantry stand in front, two ones. Those are going to be two misses. They connect on fours. The other tank is going to take a swing as well, and he is going to be unsuccessful. And then we work our way down the line here. Two stands attacking here. We roll the first. That four will remove um, a stand. Next up, we are rolling again, needing threes here. So another attack going on. That one is going to be good, so another stand is removed, and we have two attacks left to resolve. And that's another removed stand, and then lastly, this one going against this bazooka, bazooka team here, that stand is removed as well, so very bloody initial combat. 
We roll up to see if the Americans counterattack. They do. So they launch back into the fray. These two are going to go against this, uh, this tank here. Needing a 5 from the mortar team, they actually get a 5 and a 6, so both of those are going to hit. It hits at uh, any tank of 2, so those saves are both made. The next tank takes two swings. We roll two on camera before we realize there's a third there, but uh, also getting some high dice here, and that's going to be two hits that go on to him. He is going to equal an any tank on one of those die. It is going to bail him out. We roll for the third one off camera, and it was not a hit. And then starting from the top with a rifle team, they need fours, they miss. The bazooka team needs a five, and they're actually going to kill a German team. And then the next one will miss. The Germans are going to counterattack and pile right back in, and they are going to start swinging immediately, getting two swings onto this infantry stand. The uh, next one uh, will be a bazooka stand there in the middle. That will also be cut down, needing a three. Two swings going on to this uh, infantry stand here, and it will be cut down as well, needing a three. Where they're going to have the remaining tanks take swings. They need fours with their special rule, and they are going to miss. The Americans do fail on the counter charge, so they fall back. They're going to be pinned down, and the Germans have overrun the position with a consolidation move. And with the Germans winning this assault, they will control their objective in their opponent's deployment zone at the end of their turn, which is going to give them the victory today. So a hard-fought game by both sides, a little shorter than I thought. I, I didn't think that position was going to get overrun the way that it did. I talked to my son a little bit about what he was thinking, and I tend to help him with this strategy as well. But he held those stewards tight on his own, and he had a strategy there where I was coming down both flanks. His objectives were in the middle, and you know he was going to try to hold off on the flanks and then send those stewards right up the middle along with the Sherman HQs to uh, get the objective. Maybe send them up a little too early, but I thought it was a sound strategy. He didn't think the assault was going to go the way that it did as quickly as it did, and the M10 tank destroyers really got unfortunate with a remount, with a failed remount, and not able to do anything with the Stugs uh, with the amount of firepower that they possess. We also had some really bad luck with the three inch tank destroyers. I don't think they landed really any shots, but they did a great job along with those 76s, isolating the Tigers and providing a distraction for them. The 76s just really got caught between a rock and a hard place. But at the end of the day, we had a ton of fun playing this game. If you have any feedback or suggestions or things we missed in the rules, uh, please leave some feedback below so we can continue to improve. Thanks for watching uh, and we'll see you next time.